Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use 123D Make. This video will cover a number of topics including navigation controls, importing a 3D model, adding material to the library, editing the dimensions of the object that you are working on, an overview of the different construction techniques will be given, the ways to modify the model using hollow, thicken and shrink wrap will be explained, the assembly steps will be demonstrated, and finally, I will show you how to export the nested sheets to DXF, EPS, or PDF. We will firstly open an example shape and look at how to alter the different views of the model with your mouse. For the model on screen to rotate, press and hold the right mouse button and move the mouse until the model is in the position that you want. If you want to pan, press and hold the scroll wheel and move the mouse in the required direction. Alternatively, you can use the view cube, which you may be familiar with from its use in other Autodesk programs. Also, the icons along the right hand side of the screen may be used to scroll, pan, zoom, zoom all and switch between orthographic and perspective view. We will now move on to using the option menu on the left hand side of your screen. At the top of the menu is the import button. This is used to import files made on other CAD packages or files that were downloaded from the internet. To open on 123D Make the file must be saved as either an STL or an OBJ. Any other file types will not appear in the menu and cannot be used. The I button will show the original model that was imported when the construction technique was applied. The button below that is the rotate button which can be used to rotate the model if it is imported in an incorrect orientation. Manufacturing settings is where the different materials can be added to the menu. You may choose from the drop down menu or add your own material. In many cases you will need to add your own material as the preset material may not be the same as the one you want to use. To add a material, press the pencil button. A pop up box will appear. To add to the menu, click the plus button. Rename the material that has to be added. The material size should be the same as the dimensions of the bed of your machine. The bed of the laser cutter that I'm using is 900 by 600. This is useful as the nesting feature will use the material dimensions it gives an indication of the amount of material required. I recommend using the default cutting tool parameters unless a cutting tool such as the router is being used, in which case the tool diameter should be entered. This keeps the nested components far enough apart to allow for the cutter to pass between them. Press done when complete. Your material is now available to select in the drop down menu. When an object is imported, the size is changed to the 123D make default. To revert to the original size of the model, check the original size box. Alternatively, you can enter the dimensions manually. To keep the proportions of the object, check the uniform scale box. With this checked, when the, ne when the dimension is changed, each of the other dimensions changes in proportion. The next option is to set the construction technique that you will make the object with. There are five options to choose from. Stacked slices, interlock slices, curved, radial slices and folded panels. The stack slices is the one that I have selected now. This stacks the slices into a number of layers. The thickness of the layers is dependent on the material that you are using. For example, if 3mm thick material is being used, each slice will be 3mm thick. This feature also has a number of different options to assist in assembly. If you choose to use dowels, 
1 to 3D make will add a number of holes to each slice. The dowel can be inserted through these holes to line up each slice when assembling. Different types of holes can be used. Square holes Pencil shaped holes in which a pencil can be used to line up each slice A cross shaped hole Or a vertical or horizontal slot with the cross shaped and the vertical and horizontal slots, they each add in a piece of material which can be used as the dowel. Interlock slice construction method cuts the model into two stacks of interlocking slices. The number of slices can be increased or decreased by using the up and down arrows. The greater the number of slices, the more detailed the model will be. An advantage of this method over the stack slices method is that it uses less material and doesn't require the use of glue. It is also much easier to assemble as each slice locates itself by slotting into one another. Slice direction can be used to change the direction of the slice depending on your preferences. To do this, Move the blue cone or the orange circle until you find a position that you like or until it snaps to one of the 90 degree snap points. Notice the nested parts updating on the right hand side of the screen. Depending on the slice direction, the number of parts and sheets required may increase or decrease. Curve is very similar to interlock slices, except it cuts perpendicular to a curve. It is best used for models that have a lot of curves. The radial slices construction method cuts the 3D model into slices radiating from the center of the model. This method is most suited to round symmetrical objects. Folded panels is generally used for sheet metal projects and etches fold lines onto the material. It is not very useful for cardboard or plywood as they do not bend very well. Modify form is used to edit the 3D model before being made. There are three options to choose from, hollow, thicken and shrink wrap. Hollow removes material from the middle of the object without affecting the exterior. This can be useful for the stack slices method to reduce the amount of material being used. Thicken can be used to add material to the outside of the shape and increase wall thickness. To remove sharp edges, shrink wrap is used to smoothen out all of the edges on the model. Assembly steps is very useful as it shows the order that each part should be assembled. There are three materials to choose from, cardboard, plywood and plastic. I have chosen plywood here. The forward and back buttons show the assembly order that each part should be assembled in. Notice that on the sheet on the right the relevant part highlights every time the button is pressed.
When you are finished editing the model, the Get Plan section at the bottom of the menu is where you can export the nested sheets. There are three options to choose from. EPS, which is mostly used on online laser and CNC fabrication sites. PDF, which exports the plans to a PDF document, which can be printed, glued to the material and cut out by hand. For this method, it is recommended that the material size should be set to the size of the sheet of paper. The final method is DXF, where plans are sent to a CAD drawing that can be opened by packages such as AutoCAD. This drawing can then be used to produce the model on a laser cutter or a CNC router. Press the export button to save the relevant file type.